Hmm. Not moving. Hi, I'm Mark from Levy Flaton. I'm sure you've had situations where sometimes your slides don't go out. Each uh, model is different, but we happen to have a Tiffin Phaeton. And on our Tiffin Phaeton, the driver rear slide decided motor still spins, but nothing moving. Uh, we had some helpful research uh, in, on Facebook with some people on Tiffin, and they said, well, a couple of scenarios. One is uh, the gear is broken. Evidently, there's a nylon gear. Uh, and a metal gear and they tend to break. Uh, so this is a 13 year old coach you know it's had a good run but it's it's time for some service so we're gonna start to uh, tear it down and fix this baby and see if we can get it going. All right. Good news on our design is that the slide motor is actually pretty easy to access and service. So the key is that you have to take the bed off and then you have to disengage the shocks or these parts right here there's a clip you have to pull apart to disengage it from from the uh, the ball here so once you've done that then you can push this all the way up and the uh, coach slide motor is right in this area here so down here is the rail uh, that the slide sits on and you can see the motor right here this black area is the gearbox the motor is to the left behind it uh, and then it does a gear reduction down on the slide rail to the right. So I'm gonna take off these four screws here and that's where the offensive uh, gear will be located. Okay, now the cover can be removed. You gotta pull this pin here because this is the manual crank. If you wanna, if you're stuck and you have a broken gear, you can take a, a crescent wrench or a socket wrench. It looks like a maybe a 5 ace. Um, I haven't measured it. Pull this cover off. Now you can see that nylon gear. Yep, see where it's broken? Yeah, that's why the slide was not moving. Yep. At all. It was just, this was spinning and there was nothing going on after that. And we ordered a part on the website. And we received the new parts yesterday. Yep. It comes with a uh, little bit grease on it. So I've got some bearing grease here. I don't know if I'll use this heavy duty wheel bearing grease or maybe I'll just reuse some of the grease that's in here because there's plenty in the housing area here. The main thing is, you know, you just, you'd like to grease everything back up to make sure it's happy. So put a little, put a little grease on here. That way it will spin more easily. Also can take this, this gear off and re-grease it. See all the grease down in here. Remember to, peer, to put a, a pair of gloves on before you start working on the motor. And if you want your hands clean afterwards. <laughs> yep. Okay, so that should be nicely greased up. Also got to make sure that there's a washer on the other side. You want to make sure that the washer is still on that gear spindle. So this drives the, this one here and then the secondary gear behind it drives this here. Each one is probably a reduction in, in speed, I would imagine, to give you more power. To be honest, I don't know that they should have had a, um, a nylon uh, gear on here. If it would have all been metal, then uh, probably would have never failed. But they probably had some limited manufacturing uh, that you know they didn't want to spend the extra money. Didn't make sense. I don't know. That's usually how it works. Put the cover back on. And don't forget to put the manual crank head on again, whatever this is called. And you can start to put your screws in. You want to alternate screw heads so that you have e even distribution on the torque. If you got a power driver, you can do this much quicker. My new power drivers decided to take a dump the other day. Break. <laughs> <laughs> Permanent break. Once you get them started tight, you want to go around again to make sure that they are definitely tight. Fairly simple fix. Most people can do this, I think. 
Of course, I haven't tested it yet to see that it works. Yeah. But. Way, are you ready for the moment of truth? Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, it's nice to come today. I don't know if it's the cause of the failure, but sometimes we tend to press and hold the button too long and it would kind of do a clicking sound and that's probably the gears kind of spinning out or skipping. So you may want to kind of slowly come up to the last position and it will kind of click and try and minimize uh, the gear spinning more than it needs to uh, and that probably will protect it from stress. So we're back, back in business now. Yay! We can move now! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to put the uh, shock absorber clip back on so that this won't fall off here. That way you can easily lift, lift your bed up. The big thing is you're trying to get both ends of this clip back in the slots right here. So I started on the bottom, kind of held it here, and then stretched it and pulled it over to the oh. top. Oh! Yeah. Got it in. Yeah! Good job, honey! You fixed the slide! Yay! <laughs> That's good. It's a simple fix, huh? Yep. So stay tuned to Le Vie Flaton for more repairs because this coach is old and we're going to have a lot of them. See you later. Next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching this video. If you find this video provides the information you need, please give us a like and feel free to share this video. Comment below if you have a question. We continue to produce informative videos to benefit fellow RVers on how to repair things on RV. Subscribe and click the bell now to get notification on our next RV repair video.